This video is going to be about active transport. So we know that passive transport doesn't require the cell to use any energy because things are just going to be flowing down their concentration gradients from high to low. Active transport, on the other hand, does require that the cell use some of its energy in the form of ATP because now we're going to be pumping things against their concentration gradients. So we have two kinds of active transport that we're going to talk about. So the first is primary active transport. And in primary active transport, the transport protein is going to bind to ATP directly, hydrolyze it, and then use that energy to transport things against their concentration gradients. So a good example of primary active transport is the sodium potassium pump. So the sodium potassium pump is going to pump two potassiums into the cell for every three sodiums that it pumps out of the cell. So a good way to remember that is pumpkin, and so if you remember pumpkin, you'll never forget that the sodium potassium pump pumps K into the cell. And so we are gonna have two potassiums coming into the cell and then three sodiums going out of the cell. And so both of these things are moved across their concentration gradient, or up their concentration gradients by ATP binding to the protein and getting hydrolyzed to ADP plus a phosphate. Because these phosphate bonds are very high energy, so when we hydrolyze them, it makes a lot of energy available for this protein to then use. And so the second kind of active transport we're going to look at is secondary active transport. So in secondary active transport, we don't have ATP binding directly to these proteins, but what we do instead is we use the concentration gradients that were set up by primary active transport to then move something against its concentration gradient. So for example, uh, let's say now we have this huge sodium concentration on the outside of the cell because of the sodium potassium pump. And then let's say um, you go out and you eat a huge meal, and so now your bloodstream is uh, full of glucose as well. And so glucose has a higher concentration inside of our cells um, than it does outside of the cells, especially after we've absorbed a lot of it. And so we need a way, though, to get this last bit of glucose into our cells. That way we can really get all of the energy that we possibly can. And so how we do that is through something called a cotransporter. And there's two kinds of cotransporters. You can have antiports if things are moving in opposite directions, or you can have symports if things move in the same direction. So what's going to happen in this scenario is that sodium is now going to be able to flow down a concentration gradient through this protein to the inside of the cell. So when it does this, what happens is that this protein also picks up a glucose and then transports it against its concentration gradient into the cell by coupling it with the movement of sodium down its concentration gradient. So to review, active transport requires that the cell use some of its energy in the form of ATP to pump things against its concentration gradient. In primary active transport, uh, the protein is going to be directly binding to ATP and hydrolyzing it and using that energy to transport things. And then in secondary active transport, we're going to use a concentration gradient set up by primary active transporters like the sodium potassium pump to then transport a second molecule against its concentration gradient. Um, either in the same direction as the um, sodium in this case, if you have a symporter, which is what the sodium glucose cotransporter is, or in opposite directions if you have an antiport. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in these videos will be true regardless of what biology course you're taking. However, the material we covered in this video is specifically referencing material covered in Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building, and you can schedule a free 30-minute appointment to have one-on-one -on -one tutoring online, or you can stop by during any of our business hours. For more information about the services we provide, you can go to our website at www.baylor.edu tutoring. Thank you.